Uh, this is a recent article from yesterday, December 13th, Tuesday. Today is uh, Wednesday, December 14th, 2011. Uh, Iran is uh, looking to hold a war game to close the Hormuz Strait. And uh, this strait supplies most of the uh, or most of the oil of the world's energy needs is transported through the Strait of Hormuz. The Middle East region supplies 70% of the world's energy needs, and about half of that goes through the Strait of Hormuz. So Iran is looking to hold an exercise to close the Strait of Hormuz in the near future. It says, Iran leadership says, if the world wants to make the region insecure, we will make the world insecure. So I saw this news, and um, I also saw the statements from Ben Bernanke, the Federal Reserve Chairman, um, that made some of the markets tank today. And um, I sold a little more than half my oil holdings at around $100 a barrel, and I pre-bought back most of that at the current price below 96 So I figured I'm just going to hold on to it with this type of news that's going on. The uh, editor-in-chief of the Kayan newspaper in an editorial on December 13th, that was yesterday, said that under the United Nations Convic Convention on the Law of the Sea, the Islamic Republic has the right to close the Straits of Hormuz if its interest in the waterway are threatened. So he's saying they're threatened because the Western countries are trying to drum up support for the imposition of an oil embargo on Iran. A um, little common sense, if there's an oil embargo on Iran, uh, Iran is the fifth largest oil exporter in the world. No way are they going to be able to make up the supply through Saudi Arabia, who's already probably pretty much stretched to the limit, would still make enough for the shortfall from Libyan oil. Um, and also, uh, you know, you're considering something that Iran is, you know, a few times bigger oil support, uh, exporter than uh, Libya uh, by several times. So if they cut off their oil just by sanctions or whatever, the oil prices are going to go way to heck up. They're not going to be able to bring them on fast enough. Uh, it says Iranian leaders are defined, but many of the average Iranians feel fear of war. And um, that's pretty much the same type of attitudes exist there as exist everywhere else in the world. It says as intentions arise, many have started taking precautions in Iran. Some are stocking up on basic goods, others are changing their money into foreign currencies or obtaining visas to move out of the country to go somewhere else. Arash, an interior designer, recently decided to buy bags of rice, fill his new freezer with chicken and meat just in case. Uh, this is, I think, will witness great instability either through war, collapse of power, probably talking about internally uh, regime change. So he's preparing himself, and uh, he didn't want to let the, the news know whose last name was, out of concerns of his safety. Like many in the capital, he was carrying out basic, simple safety measures, like as is those on the United States, but Ariel has taken an additional step of applying for a U.S. green card because relatively speaking, probably for now, the United States is a safer place to be than Iran, looking at current conditions. Now this I found very interesting. It relates to their currency. It says, while Iranian officials continually say the country can cope with the growing limitations and sanctions, average Iranians are faced with soaring prices and a plummeting exchange rate for their currency, the real. The real has lost the Iranian real has lost 48% of its value against the U.S. dollar since 2008. Now that's against fiat to fiat, their money versus the U.S. money, not their money versus gold. So um, a lot of people are fearful of a collapse of the dollar losing possibly half its value, and that's why they take gold and silver. Now you have to figure, what is the average Iranian doing, especially ones that are on the top of the uh, income stream, because they do have a lot of money coming in that country in Iran. And this is a point I have to drive home because, uh, you know, we don't have access to a lot of statistics on what's going on in gold buying and silver buying in a lot of countries that are accurate. And this is my opinion, but it's a little bit of common sense and it makes a lot of sense because if you were an Iranian, you can't be buying U.S. dollars per se. Um, and, you know, looking around, are you going to buy euros? Maybe you're going to buy Chinese rupee? 
I mean, it doesn't make sense. What currency can you really buy that's really safe? So I imagine there's a heck of a lot more gold buying going on, silver buying, platinum, palladium. And I don't think the statistics that are available to uh, a lot of the Western financial type people because um, it, you probably have a lot of transactions that are coming directly maybe from China and they're not reported any place. They're not reported anywhere. So I'd imagine there's a lot of pressure coming on from Iran buying physical gold, physical silver, physical platinum, physical palladium. And I think that's going on in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Oman, you know, UAE. I think that's going on everywhere. We do know that in Libya, Gaddafi was buying tons and tons of gold with oil revenue. So it makes you wonder, like, exactly how much gold is actually available for uh, investment, you know, despite, you know, some of the numbers we look at. Because I'd imagine, like, a, a country like Iran has very little options to invest. And, in, you know, if you're an Iranian, would you, or if you're an Iranian government, how would you store your wealth? The fact that it can be frozen, accounts can be frozen. So what would you be doing? I'd imagine the Iranian government is buying lots of gold. So that's bullish for the metals. I just want to point that out because there's no statistics available, but it's a given. That's what they have to be doing. Remember, the Iranian real lost 48 percent of its value against the U.S. dollar just since 2008, in a few years. So, <laughs> what do you think they're doing? Uh, I was looking at this um, chart on the uh, euro today, and I know it bounced up a little bit. It was below 130 to the dollar psychological support, but it sprang back up a little bit, and it's about 130 to the dollar right now. Now, we're looking at the metals going down, but I want to repeat myself again. The metals are not going down so bad in euros. So what do you think those people are doing? I'd imagine there's a lot more physical buying. This morning, I went on to the um, Gainesville.coin site, and I went, so let me just get a few ounces of something. So I got a few ounces of um, those Canadian Cougars. And um, it was very difficult to get on the site. I had to hit refresh button about 10 times. There's so much buying going on. So is this $29 spot price going to be holding up? I think I got a below 29 spot. And uh, is this $29 spot price going to be there that long? No, no, not at all. And I know Bernanke said some things this morning that upset the markets because, and uh, this is one pet peeve of mine. I think, you know, all the people are in a gold and silver. They should not be critical of Bernanke. Bernanke is doing great for you. You know, everybody makes fun of him. He's helicopter Ben. He thinks gold is not money. You know, I don't care about that. I think the guy's great. He needs to do more helicopter Ben. He needs to do more quantitative easing. You know, it's, it's so what? The, the price of silver and gold goes up. You know, that's not figured in the consumer price index. That's no problem, you know. That's the way I look at it. You know, I mean, I think you ought to send a guy a thank you note. I mean, all this criticism of him, you think he doesn't realize how much he's being criticized? So he's holding off on quantitative easing. You know, thank the guy for quantitative easing. Send him a thank you note and say he's doing a great job. And we'll see the silver go up to about $600 an ounce and we'll get rid of it. That's the way I look at it. You know, people are... You know, I don't know. I don't know. I think I should be criticizing this guy at all. Now, I was looking at gold, and this is going back to August 7th, and it's just a comparison between the dollar index and gold. Gold is the, the gold color, and the, the green here is just the dollar index. So since August 7th, the dollar went up almost 8%, and since August 7th, 2011 to uh, December 14, 2011, in a period of about, you know, four months or so, just over four months, the, dollar, the gold went down 4%, almost 4%. But actually, in real constant dollars, gold would have went up several percent. And, you know, in euros, it went up. In a lot of other currencies, it went up a little bit. 
and consider you're not getting any interest on your money. Gold is still a smart bet in all these other currencies. It's not looking as bad. We're looking at it in, in you know, as far as I'm, if I'm talking to somebody in the United States, it's probably the majority of listening to anything on this anyway. In dollars, gold is not looking so great. Silver is not looking so great. But in euros, they're not looking too bad at all. And, you know, if I was in Europe, just like if I was in Iran, and if I was faced with a currency collapse or some kind of uh, economic crunch that would cause the currency to totally go down, you know, in the case of the Iranian currency, it dropped 48 percent in three and a half years against just the U.S. dollar. Now, in euros, Europe, it, it can go to 120 again. Why couldn't it go to 120 again? It was there about a, what, about a year and a half ago? So, it could go that low. I don't think it's going to fall apart right away, you know. But uh, they're going to do more quantitative easing. But if you got, my point is that if you got euros, what are you going to do? You're going to buy physical metals. So there's a hell of a lot of physical metal buying going on in Europe. I know it, and there's a hell of a lot of physical metal going on in the Middle East, especially Iran. So we're looking today, uh, just 29, 19, 29, 20, whatever it is. Dollar index is 80.5. Now, if you figure the dollar index around 75, which it was not too long ago, these, these metals, the silver would already be like 31-something. There'd be that much of a difference. Oil would be over $100 a barrel. So I don't expect it to stay that way very long. And, um, you know, uh, as far as Bernanke, he's going to actually start um, doing a lot more quantitative easing. They're going to have to yeah, because... Uh, you know, there's another thing I was looking at, too, the, uh, the gold-platinum ratio. It wasn't even that bad when, during the 2008 crisis and 2009 crisis. So actually, platinum being that much lower than gold tells me um, there's like an expectation of industry to be very, very bad, you know. But... Um, so the only way they're going to probably try to get that going again is they're going to start printing more and more money, and it's going to be extremely bullish for the metals. I think there's going to be some big surprises coming into play. But after the big surprises, everybody's going to be saying, ah, oh, it's going to the moon, it's going to the moon, everything's falling apart. That's when you sell it and you take your fiat, and that's what I'm going to be doing. Because I figure with uh, silver, when it gets around 60, I'm going to be selling that stuff. Maybe not the physical, but uh, the PSLP.